Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to edit an image in On One Photo Raw 2023. As a matter of fact, it's so easy you could do it in five steps. Even less if you're not replacing a sky or doing any noise reduction, but for this image, it's going to take five steps. Now, before I show you how to do this, I do have a favor to ask. I have a free weekly newsletter. I've had it for a few years. It goes out every Monday. I would be honored if you would subscribe to it. In the description below this video will be a link to this webpage. Here you could enter your email address and you'll start getting that newsletter every Monday. Now there is a support tier also available for $7 a month or $70 a year. You'll get an extra email. It goes out usually on Thursday, sometimes on Friday. Also, I do an occasional podcast and there is a chat area where you could... Uh, ask questions and stuff like that. So that is in the support area. But you just come here, put your email address in there. You'll get the free newsletter every Monday. All right. Five easy steps to edit an image in On One Photo Raw 2023. First of all, these steps aren't written in stone, meaning because I do something first doesn't mean you have to do it first. If you feel more comfortable doing it second or third or fourth, Feel free to move the steps around. What I like to do first is I like to crop. And if the image needs any transform adjustments, I do that right away. This image, as you could see, the buildings look like they're falling backwards. So I need to make those buildings stand more upright. So I need to go to the transform tools. So my step one is crop and transform adjustments if needed. Um, if your image doesn't need any cropping or no, any transform adjustments, you could skip this step. Well, I'm going to open up transform tool and I'm going to go to the vertical slider and we'll pull it this way to make those buildings stand up a little more upright. Um, also rotation it seems to be slightly, slightly, slightly crooked. It's a little better. Okay. Now when I've done that and I've made the building stand more upright, you can see I have some blank pixels along the sides, a little bit along the bottom. So I need to crop those away. So we'll go to the crop tool and I want to uh, keep the original ratio up here at the top and I'm just going to draw in from the side and get rid of those blank pixels like that. And we'll click apply up here and like that. So step one is done. Step two, tone and color. So we're going to go to the tone and color controls. And I'm just going to adjust this as I normally would. What I like to do on my images that are landscape images, I pull the highlights down a little bit usually till I see some detail. I'm going to be replacing the sky anyway, but typically I pull the highlights down till I see a little detail in the lighter parts. Then I would jump down to shadows and I would open those up. Then I would do a white and black adjustment. And the way I do that is I hold in the J key on my Mac, it's J key on a PC as, as a matter of fact as well. I'll click on the whites and I'll move that to the right till I see that red start to come through. That means I'm clipping those highlights. So I'll just draw that back until all that red disappears. Just do the same thing for the blacks. I'll just keep that J key pressed in, go to blacks and move that to the left till I see blue come in. And I'll clip the shadows a little bit so I don't mind having a little blue showing up. Then what I'll do once I do that uh, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, I jump to midtones and I just adjust that appropriately what I feel it needs to be. In this case, just got to tweak it up just a little bit. Now, for this image, it's pretty sharp. I don't really need to add any structure or haze, and I think I'll take care of that later, uh, but I'm not going to do it now. Also, as far as the um, saturation, vibrance is concerned, you could do that if you feel free. For me, I don't like mine to be too overly colorful. So I think it's fine the way it is. So we're done with step two, tone and color. Now, again, feel free if you need to move more sliders, do so. But I think for me, I'm done. Now, step three for this image, and you may skip this, is I'm going to replace the sky. So I'm going to go to the sky tab right here. And it takes a second the first time you open it because it's going to make the mask. And you can see it made the mask. Then you could pick your sky. Now I'm going to go to the category and I'm going to pick an Occitone sky. I think I'll pick an Occitone blue velvet. Now I don't want a sky that dominates the image. I want a sky that complements the scene. So I'm not going to, I'm going to try to find a sky 
that is just complementing the scene and matches the lighting. When I took this image in Columbus, Ohio, I was standing on a bridge and the sun was actually to my left and it was setting. It was starting to get low in the sky. So it was at two photographers left. And you could see how the left side, my left, as I'm looking at the buildings, are lit up more than the right side of those buildings. So the sun's over there. This, uh, this sky, I kind of like it. It's very subtle, but it does complement the scene. We have this leading line that I drew in from the corner, this walkway, so it's leading us diagonally through the frame. And then we have these lines coming in from the left, and I think it just complements everything and gets everyone looking more towards the middle. So I kind of like that. I think that subtle sky works great for this image. So we do have an issue though. We have some water over here and the sky should be reflected in that water. Even though there's a little ripple on that water, it still should be there. So I'm going to go down here and click on reflection. And then I think I'll go to the amount and just kind of bring it up a little bit just so I could see it. So we know it's there. Looks pretty good. I don't think I need to shift the vertical of the reflection. I don't think I really need to do any other adjustments for the sky. I like it the way it is. It's masked in perfectly. Uh, the antenna of this building up here is still seen. This antenna over here is still seen. So everything looks pretty good. So I think I'm done with step three. That's the sky replacement. Now we'll go to step four, sharpening and noise reduction. And to do that, we're going to jump back to the develop tab. And then we're going to go to the noise and sharpening a tab within there. And we have noise AI already, me, already active right there. What we could do, if you think maybe you want to try to do tack sharp AI and noise AI, click on both. You have to wait for it to render. There's a little progress bar on the lower uh, right hand side of the image here. Let that render. You can see that I don't like that. It's kind of messing up the building over here and I could come in and try to play with the sliders but really this image is very sharp so I don't think it needs any sharpening whatsoever I'm just going to use no noise AI so we'll click on that and I'll probably do an effect to effect to do something with sharpness so I, I have no noise so I got rid of the noise it's as easy as that I don't even need to move a slider so we're gonna apply click the apply button and it applied it, and now I'm done with step four. Now step five, effects. Again, this is optional as well. We're gonna go to effects. We're gonna add some filters here. The first filter I want to add is to do something with that green grass. I wanna to try to get some more total variance through that green grass. It's just like a solid kind of shade of green. So I wanna affect that. So I'm gonna to go to add filter, and I'm going to go to the color enhancer. In the color enhancer filter, I'm going to jump down to color range and I'm going to go right to yellow. And then with yellow, I'm going to make the yellow parts brighter. You can see how I'm making the yellow parts of the trees, the little bit of yellow that's in that grass brighter. Maybe we'll just go to saturation, just bump that up a touch. Then I'm going to go to green. And with green, I'll take brightness down a little bit and maybe bring saturation up a little bit. So that looks pretty good. And overall, I mentioned when we were in the develop module with the tone and color that I wasn't going to add any vibrance or saturation. Part of the reason for that is because I like to do it selectively with the color range section of the color enhancer filter. This is an HSL filter. That's all it is. So I like to do it this way. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I sometimes would come in and go to blue and I might take brightness down with blue to darken the sky. But in this case, I don't think it even needs that. So I think that's good. Now, I mentioned that the image is very sharp, but there is a filter that is my favorite filter, and I just want to try it, uh, that affects sharpness. So I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to go to Dyna Dynamic Contrast. And right out of the gate, you can see it adds this natural filter. And there's, let me give you a before after. There's before, and there's after. So you can see how that filter just gives it that little bit of pop. I like that a lot. I just think it, it's making this tree pop out a little more. The buildings just look a little better. I, I just think that's great. So I'm just going to go with that. And pretty much I'm done. I like to finish off with a vignette. We'll go to the here, add filter. We'll go to vignette. 
And typically what I do is I add a strong vignette, but usually that's too strong. And then what I'll do is I'll go to brightness and I'll make it less, less dark by moving the slider to the right. So I could then do a before after the vignette. There's before and there's after. And that's it. So let me give you an entire before after. All right. There's before. That's our raw file that's unedited. And there's app. There's before. And there's after. Humongous difference. So you can see it's super easy to edit an image in On One Photo Raw 2023. I did it in five steps. The first step was transformation because it was buildings and they look like they're falling backwards and I had to crop it a little bit. That step you may not have to do, but that's step one for me. Step two, tone and color. That's the main adjustments for the image. I think everyone's going to have to do that. So that you'd have to do. Tone and color, number two. Number three, sky replacement if you need to do it. Again, you may not. Step four, sharpening and noise reduction. In this case, I only had to reduce noise. And step five, effects. Now, I do want to talk about noise reduction for a moment. You've heard me many, many times uh, say that when you reduce noise in an image, you should do it very early in your workflow. And I'll still say it. If I do an image or do a video tomorrow on Topaz Labs to Noise AI, I'll talk about sending the image into Noise AI as early as possible in your workflow. But today you saw that I did it at step four. The reason for that is because the noise reduction is integrated in On One Photo Raw 2023, it's not necessary for you to do it right away. It doesn't matter if you do it first or you do it last. It's all going to work with everything else you did and give you the best noise reduction possible. So that's why when you have a noise reduction app that is integrated into a bigger app like On One Photo Raw 2023, you don't have to be as concerned about doing it or doing in this case noise reduction in a very specific part of your workflow, which I always say early in your workflow. But on the other hand, if you're using an app like Lightroom that has noise reduction in it, but it's not very good, and you're using, even if you're using No Noise AI by On One as a plugin, or you're using On One Photo Raw's, um, or I'm sorry, or you're using Topaz Labs to Noise AI as a plugin, you want to do that as early as possible in your workflow because when you use them as plugins, standalone apps, um, they work more effectively on an image that didn't have a lot of tone adjustments to it, a lot of contrast added to it, a lot of sharpening, a lot of texture, a lot of clarity added to it. They just work more effectively early in your workflow. So that's my explanation for that. I'm trying to head off any comments somebody might ask me in the uh, comment section below just to let you know why I do it at step four here. You really don't have to do it very early in your workflow. So that's it. Uh, that's how you edit an image in five easy steps in On One Photo Raw 2023. Also, I'd like to remind you, please sign up for my free newsletter. The free newsletter, again, goes out every Monday. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.